hello friends so uh, what i have here today is a very unique feature which is already almost presumed and declared uh, as unavailable in ssis that is the scope of interactivity by which i mean most of the people uh, using ssis have already presumed and declared that ssis does not provide any interactive uh, user interface i mean uh, a user interaction during the process during the processing which is not completely true so what i have done here is a little poc to show how we can uh, dynamically at the run time provide values and uh, enable ssis to interact with the users during the run time uh, so let's have a look at what i have here today is uh, i have declared three variables count table name and validate uh, name so actually uh, what i am trying to do is uh, pretty simple uh, i am getting the uh, input of the table name from the user at the run time and then checking that user uh, checking the table that uh, the user user responds with if that exists in my database if it exists i'll go and get the count of the number of recalls in that table and then display the count if the table doesn't exist i will flash an error so uh, currently i have connected uh, the connection manager to my default servers sample db database which is uh, hosting three tables emp log time and the process table so what i let's uh, explore each and every task here what we have done with each of them so i have for uh, declared a script task for first getting the values input values uh, as the table so the read write variable uh, is the user table name variable and i have done the script la scripting language as in vb as i am quite comfortable with that so and in this script that i have written uh, is something like so this is the script that i have written i am actually fetching the uh, value i mean from the input box that is uh, the table name uh, into the response variable and then if the response is empty empty that the doesn't that the user doesn't provide any response i will flash an error and fail the task and i mean fail the package that ways and uh, otherwise i'll pass that value of the response to the user table uh, user table name variable that i have declared and move and proceed so that's uh, the part of this task next is i again have created uh, a sql task connecting to the sample db and simply taking the in values as let's have a look what i am doing here i'll paste this paste this uh, thing to the sql server so i have declared a table name got the input value from the variable and then with the with the help of the output uh, parameter i am passing the if the table exists i am passing a value of 1 or 0 if the table is not existing let's say i do it for emp table right i'll just show that so if i run this i'll get a value of 1 so i'll be passing that value as our output parameter and let's say the user says uh, a b c so in that case the count will be 0 so the output parameter will, will host a, uh, i mean will get a value of 0 returned so that's all we have done here so parameter mapping let's have a look so we have two input and output parameters the first parameter is table name which is having an input of varchar type and the other is a validate name which is an int value and the default value of this validate name is 0 in case we get a find a match of the table entered by the user the value will be set to 1 during the execution as you can see so next is before proceeding we have put a constraint here let's have a look so if the validate name is 0 the variable value is 0 then we will flash an error 
so this is an error task which is taking the table name and validate name variable and flashing an error saying the table uh, is not present in the database I'm actually again checking the validate value to be zero just a uh, cross check we can ignore this and directly since we have already uh, designed a pre constraint so we can do away with this uh, variable value tree check so we can leave this but I have provided it so that's the part of this script that is doing if it is if the table is not present in the database this will flash a message that's all this will do okay next if I have a put a precedence like uh, if there is a constraint of validate name is equal to one that is in case I, I find a match of that table in the database I move and go and get the count how this is done let's have a look how we get the count again I'm pasting pasting this content to SQL server right we get the table match say we get a match of value of EMP and then we get the count this is a dynamic SQL which I have uh, written here for getting the count for uh, for the table whatever is the input table that we get so if we run this if we run this we get the number of records in our EMP table that is uh, number of records are 3 as you can see there are, num there are 3 number of records right so this is how it is done again we uh, have created an input and output parameters the first question mark will be substituted by the parameter with a parameter name as 0 or 1 whatever we and this is the second this is the output so let's have a look at the parameter mapping again so this is the parameter name parameter name uh, of 0 will go first I mean will be substituted on the first question mark and next the count parameter which is an output type and parameter name 1 will be substituted on the second question mark so that's it so once this is done we will uh, move ahead on this display count this will uh, take two this will read two values the table name and the count variables and it will simply display the message saying the table has uh, three number of records so one thing uh, the important thing is there should be a conversion of the count to string which I have made here because uh, otherwise this task will fail your VB you have to put a conversion from int to string type for displaying the values so let's just perform a demo run for this and see how this works interactively so first of all it will ask for the table name please provide the table you want to count so let's say we do not provide anything in the first go we simply click ok so there will be an error flashed no data input provided and your task will fail so the package has failed next let's perform one more run we provide a non-existent table I mean the table which is non, uh, non -ex I mean not existing in our sample DB database say A, B, C, uh, A, B, C, D so this table is not existing and then click OK So we will be getting an error the table ABCD is not present in the database so it's quite fascinating to see yeah our SSIS package is actually interacting with, with us with the messages uh, appropriate messages so we click OK and our package ends and the third run let's go and provide a proper table name let's say EMP 
it displays the table EMP has three records so uh, we have one more table let's just perform a run for one more table right the table process has has these many records so it's it's quite clear that the SSIS package is interacting with us appropriately and bringing the right messages for us so this is really helpful at the time you are trying to debug or create a big uh, big SSIS package and you uh, get lost somewhere with the variable values and stuff like that and moreover for uh, let's uh, i mean uh, try to deploy this package on our ssis uh, uh, integration services engine and then see if this interactive thing goes with us uh, there or not so i what i do is i say save copy as on the sql server this is my default server I save it as interactive package with the name of interactive package and I say ok so this is saved in a SQL server is an msdb save I mean we are not saving it on the file system so let's see so the save is complete now let's connect to our integration services engine you should be seeing that package right this is our msdb save so interactive package is saved there uh, let me just yeah so the interactive package is saved there now let's try to execute the package see if this interactive uh, thing that we had designed is working from here or not we say execute you can see the interactive part is working here also so if I provide the name process it gives you the count uh, from the integration uh, engine as well so just I just wanted to bring out this feature and show you it to you all because it's it's really uh, very few people actually know and the others really say that uh, the interactive feature doesn't work here so if I say it's, it's bringing the appropriate messages so it's really good to know that uh, yeah your SSS packages uh, can behave interactively so that was just a brief and a demo about uh, a little POC that I had done for about the interactivity uh, to bring out that yeah your SSS packages can interact so thanks uh, a lot guys I hope this is really helpful to you thank you